Aaron, you've got beans over here with a tremendous amount of, of water hemp in it and some grass. We're standing in a plot here that's got some water hemp, some grass. Right next to us is a plot with no water hemp. What, and, and you've got a sign on these last two that says Metribuzin. What's the magic of Metribuzin? Well, it actually exploits one of the weaknesses of, of water hemp resistance, Stu, and it's the fact that most of the triazine resistance that we see in our water hemp populations here in Illinois is metabolic resistance. It's not target site based. Now, what does that mean? Well, quite simply, what that means is that the symmetrical triazines, things like atrazine, simazine, are no longer effective, but asymmetrical triazines that would be metribuzin that most people would, would recognize in soybean, metribuzin remains effective. And so what we've tried to focus on for the last several years, we have a population just east of here that's resistant to herbicides from at least six different classes of, of, of modes of action. And one of those happens to be, it's triazine resistant, but we know it's metabolic based, but there's also resistance to the PPO inhibitors. Now, a lot of people think when you have PPO-resistant water hemp, it's only to the foliar-applied ones that we use in soybean. But the fact is the resistance is also there to the soil-applied ones. Products like, you know, sulfentrazone is one active ingredient. Flumioxazone would be another example. But the way that that resistance is manifest to the soil-applied is that the length of residual control gets less and less. So I went back a couple of years ago and looked at some data that we generated clear back in 1996 when I was first working, began working with water hemp. And at about six weeks after planting with something like an authority or a sulfentrazone uh, herbicide, six weeks we were still well above 90% control of water hemp. But that was a sensitive population. If we would take the same rates now and put that on a resistant population, by three weeks we would have to follow up with a post-application. So thinking about both of these things, we thought about, well, what would Metribuzin look like on these resistant water hemp populations? And so we started an experiment about five or six years ago where we said, all right, let's just take a, a commercial formulation. We used a product called Tricor from UPL. It's a 75 uh, dry flowable DF, like many would remember the old Syncor product was back in the day. And we said, well, we're, we're not going to guess at rates. We're going to start at one ounce of product, and we're going to go to 16 ounces in one ounce increments. So we had 16 rates of the Metribuzin product. We compared that with two rates of a sulfentrazone product, and hands down, your sulfentrazone treatments by three weeks, they had completely broken. When we got to the 10 ounce rate of Tricor, anywhere from 10 to 16 ounces, at six weeks we were still well above 90 percent control. So we think there's something here that we've overlooked for a while with Metribuzin, but we really have to emphasize that, you know, a couple of points. Number one, the rate has to be correct. Uh -huh. And a lot of folks are really stuck around that five ounces of, of product, which is way too low for most of our five soils here in the state per acre. Per acre. Okay. So we really need to focus and pay attention on what the label would recommend based on our soil types. So for these darker soils here in the Champaign area, we generally start out at about 8 to 10 ounces of product, and we're looking at very good residual control even here now. We're, we're about five to six weeks after we planted. The other things, of course, with Metribuzin, we have to pay attention to soil pH. We don't necessarily like to see high rates of Metribuzin on high pH soils. Um, and organic matter is very important. Typically, we see where there's a greater likelihood of crop response on lower organic matter soils as compared with higher organic matter soils. But it doesn't hold true that we're always going to see that. It's, it's really dependent upon the growing season. And so several years ago, we proposed this, this idea of Metribuzin to the um, group of universities who work with funding from the United Soybean Board. And I think this is probably the first instance where every one of the universities signed on to do this work. So it actually had two components to it. One was what we simply called the Metribuzin rate titration. A lot of our university colleagues in other states, they're younger, they don't have a lot of experience with Metribuzin, so we designed the first component of this collaborative project to, to do that rate titration again. And so 15 other universities were selecting a resistant amaranthus population. 
and doing, I, I think we had anywhere from 12 to 14 rates of metribuzin. So the second component of this, of this research project is to say, okay, now that you have a year's experience, select that rate of metribuzin that you're comfortable with, that gave you good residual control, and pair it with something else. Because metribuzin has never been a standalone. We have other species that we have to contend with, but most of the premixed products in the marketplace that now have metribuzin are really formulated around the other component, not necessarily the metribuzin component. And again, rate being so important, our idea was now to come up with this tank mix study where we have a high enough rate of metribuzin that we're comfortable with maintaining good residual control of the water hemp or other amaranthus, but what else can we add to it to try to round out that spectrum a little bit more? And we gave the university, the other universities, free reign to pick whatever they want to because there may be some products that don't fit the Midwest that maybe the, do fit in the Mid-South. Right. And so this would be the second year now that everybody has conducted this tank mix trial at, again, 15 universities. And we're summarizing our, uh, uh, the, the group at Kansas State University. They're starting to summarize the data on the rate titration trial. And I think it's going to make a very interesting paper that we'll submit for uh, peer-reviewed literature. And it, it certainly will. And I think a lot of farmers, just looking at, at <laughs> these three plots in here, they're going to say, wow, can I still buy this stuff? Yeah, it's, it's a product that we had a lot of utility for, you know, back in the 70s, maybe even into the 80s. But for some reason, we, we really stopped using a lot of it. And I know there used to be a lot of injury concerns, but I think some of the factors that mitigated the injury back then are not necessarily as common these days. Um, and, the, you know, the other fact we remind people, we can get injury with many other soil applied herbicides, and we do that every year. It's not necessarily something that's just unique to metribuzin. It can happen. You know, we don't, we don't try to hide that. But I think the, from what we have seen based on these United Soybean Board trials, the amount of injury that we've seen even in other states, even at the higher rates, has been actually pretty minimal. Okay. But I, I, you certainly see a difference between mm -hmm. the 8-ounce per acre rate and the 12 ounce per acre rate, yeah. and so um, I don't need. I don't know that. You, do you need to go up any higher than 12? Actually, when we when we ran the numbers, the statistics on the numbers, once we hit that 10 ounce rate in in that trial, in that two year trial, we really didn't see any benefit of going much higher than that. Now, again, there could be instances where you don't even need that much. But that's generally, again, on the darker uh, soils. Here, we're typically talking around that eight to 10 ounce rate. Um, this, you know, this course is eight ounces right here. There's 12 ounces right there, and it's a, it's a fairly large difference, sure. you know, in the level of control that we're seeing. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs>